Hello, mixtresses and mixters. This is Mixtress Ray. You're watching Mixtress Video. Um, I wanted to come on today for a few different reasons. I have notes. I'm attempting to be organized. It is not something that I excel at and I probably never will. And we're going to talk about that. But um, I wanted to come on here for a few different reasons, a few different topics I want to discuss, but also I wanted to remind you guys that I have a face. <laughs> so here it is. Every once in a while, I will remind you. Um, so there you go. Um, because I figure, I figure that <laughs> um, the Southern comes out. I mean, it's always there, right? But <laughs> it sometimes comes out in weird ways. <laughs> Sorry, Mike chair is like uh, wanting to drift. Um, I figure that if you guys can see my face, I will be more human to you. Um, so there's that. Um, okay, let me just get into my notes. And they are all over the place because this is this is how how I function. <laughs> um, so two big things that are a part of my life as a, I mean, I think it should be said, um, I have a lot of new subscribers. I have a lot of new people that are paying attention to me at the moment for either they're hate watching me or they just, they actually see themselves in me and they're enjoying me right now for whatever reason. I have more eyes on me right now than I usually do. So... I think it's a good idea to sort of introduce myself um, in a way. I am autistic and this is a, an important piece of my identity because my brain works differently than most people's brains and it is it explains a lot about me. So I think that there is sort of a so two things, two things I want to, two concepts that are um, a part of being neurodivergent. So that could be autism, ADHD, other neurodivergent. It's basically when your brain works differently. Um, and, and I'll, yeah, I have things I want to say about that too, because, okay, well, let's just get into it right now. Um, would we need the term neurodivergent if just humanity in general accepted that we all think about things differently, we all um, see things differently, we all use different kinds of language, we, we all have very different and complex brains, right? Um, neurodiversity could exp explain the entire experience of a human having a brain, you know? Um, but it has been my experience in my life that I think of things in a way, the way that I explain things and the way that I think about things doesn't usually reflect what I'm actually trying to say in the other person. So I've always been told that I say things wrong. I've always been, t you know, but, and then also the title of the video <laughs> being, do I have a shopping addiction or am I just poor? The intent behind that question was the, general concept of like, you know, would we need a word for shopping addiction if we could all afford the things that we want? I mean, I don't know. There is no answer to that because we can't know. It's just like, would we need the term neurodivergent if everyone was just understanding of each other, accepting of each other, trying to understand, trying to understand one another? and trying to accept one another. Would we need that term? I don't know, and we can't know. Um, I won't know, like, and this is something I go back and forth on, like, do I conceptualize myself as an addict or do I just have limited means? So am I feeling uh, economic, uh, what's the word? Am I feeling financial hardship and that's what's causing me distress or 
am I a victim of capitalism and having a shopping addiction? I, you know, I don't know. These are questions I'm always asking myself. I, I do sort of conceptualize myself as having addictive behavior, behaviors associated with shopping. I do characterize myself that way, but you know, it, it seems like every time I make a statement trying to define myself, someone tells me I'm defining myself wrong. Because like, if I call myself poor, then I have to consider people that have it worse than me, they get to call themselves poor. Um, when it's, I, to me, this looks like people getting hung up on words. And for me, it's always been more important to, to look at to look through the lines into what a person's really trying to say, not getting hung up on the specific words that they're using. Because if you get hung up on the specific words being used, you're never going to understand me. You're never going to, uh, and you're always going to misinterpret me because I contradict myself constantly because I, uh, this comes to, okay. So the two concepts, I contradict myself constantly because I'm constantly trying to work out what it is that I'm feeling and what is going to be the best way for me to regulate myself moving forward. And I'm talking that process out with you guys. It's not because I'm a liar or whatever. It's I'm trying to figure out how to navigate the world and I'm recording that process. And if you are really uncomfortable watching that process, you don't have to be here. You don't. Um, and if you, anyway, so the two concepts that I wanted to bring up that specifically, um, relate, I mean, they can, they can apply to anyone, but they specifically relate to neurodivergent, um, in neurodivergent spaces, these terms are used often. And I want to discuss them because they both apply to the way that I have been existing in the universe both my whole life and especially lately in front of you. <laughs> so landscaping is happening outside because it always is. So that's what you hear that in the background, I'm sure. So two things, emotional dysregulation and executive function. So Emotional, emotional dysregulation, probably don't need to define that. It's basically when you are having a hard time, uh, I mean, the way that I phrase it is when I'm having a hard time metabolizing my emotions, voicing my emotions, understanding my emotions, I am very frustrated with the process of trying to understand my emotions. And so when I am very frustrated and trying to voice what I'm feeling, it's even harder for me to use words than it normally is. And it's always hard for me to use words. It's even harder when I am having an emotion and trying to convey that emotion. And so that frustration, that emotional dysregulation can manifest itself as a shutdown, a meltdown, um, what looks like a tantrum, an emotional outburst. So if we, as, as a community, as a society, want to conceptualize ourselves as accepting of diversity, neurodivergence, um, different people having very specific different experiences. If we want to call ourselves accepting, then we need to understand that these things are going to happen. I'm going to have emotional dysregulation and you're going to see it. I'm going to have executive dysfunction and you're going to see it. So this is the other um, concept that I wanted. I, I saw someone, I, I looked it up beforehand just like, okay, is the way that I am conceptualizing executive dysfunction actually the way that it exists? <laughs> um, so I looked it up and I saw someone, it was a very short video that summed it up really well. Um, executive dysfunction can very easily be described as there's a thing that you want to do. You really, really want to do it 
but you feel extreme anxiety surrounding the fact that you can't seem to do it. And this applies to a lot of things. This applies to me being able to properly conceptualize myself and present myself to you. This also applies to, I got a lot of comments on the video. <laughs> I got a lot of comments from people saying, why don't you just save? Why don't you just get a full-time job? Why don't you just this, this, and this? And I know that that advice is coming from a space of a person that's also experienced financial hardship that has found a way out of it. And they're thinking to themselves, okay, I did it because I did this, this, and this. So anyone can do that. But that's just not the case. That's just not the case. We all have our own, and I think in particular tarot society, we anecdotally, we seem to me to be a group of oh, very anxious people and very, we most of us have been through trauma. I, I see a lot of um, neurodivergence within us. I see a lot of trauma. I see a lot of anxiety. Um, there seems to be sort of this unwritten rule and obviously it doesn't apply to anything nothing applies to everything there's nuance in everything there seems to be this unwritten rule that we don't we don't say things that might upset each other <laughs> we don't say things with emotion it's there seems to be like a lot of um i don't know what you call it i think there's a term for this but there seems to be like a lot of like I don't know what to call it, but like people coming at you with logic, 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 logic. And they think that if they can talk you, if they can like catch you in a logical error, they can just like everything can be, it's almost like there's a general consensus that logic trumps emotion. And as long as you can think your way around something you can solve it I don't even know how to explain what I'm trying to explain there so I'm just gonna like get off that train before it even get it gets more confusing but there was a lot of like in my comment section people think that they can just say something that's so obvious right like okay you're a person of limited means so you just save done which maybe it is that easy for some people. Um, I'm jealous. It's not that easy for me. And I'm not trying to put myself in a victim mentality. It doesn't mean that I'm incapable of figuring out how to do it. Cause maybe, maybe I am. Um, but I'm just, the purpose of putting out that video was to say, Hey, I am struggling. And I know that some of y'all out there are struggling too. I see you. That was the general purpose, even though that is not the takeaway that most people saw in that video. And that's unfortunate. It's upsetting because I would love to be able, I would love to be able to convey what I'm trying to convey, but it's a struggle constantly for me to find the right words. And I think that this has to, maybe this is the wrong term for this particular thing, but because executive dysfunction is usually referred to as like, you want to do a thing, but you can't figure out how to do the thing. And it can even be related to something as easy as like a task, like you want to vacuum your house, but you can't figure out how to vacuum your house, <laughs> you know, and it looks like laziness, but it's a different thing. Um, so yeah, maybe calling it executive dysfunction when I can't find the right words for something isn't exactly right, but it does explain why I, all of the things that I'm trying to say sound very meandering, very disorganized, contradictory. It's, it's because I am constantly trying to organize my thoughts. And every time I think I have something figured out, something blows it up and it's just like, nope, that's not, that's not it. So yeah, <laughs> let me look at my notes here. Um, Emotional dysregulation, going back to emotional dysregulation, I want to make sure I hit everything that's in my notes, um, which means, yeah, 
it's this is not organized it's not gonna be <laughs> as grace said in a, in a video from a couple years ago this is gonna be a long one go put your pajamas on let's do this <laughs> um anyway um I don't know if this is gonna make you guys mad if I say it this way. Okay, so there's a podcast, just for context, there's a podcaster that um, she she uses the term minty bee when she's describing a mental breakdown and I just think it's so cute and it's just repeats in my head. So there you go. Every once in a while, I'm gonna have a little minty bee on a video. I, that's the emotional dysregulation thing again. I, I've decided that I'm okay with that because I know that if I were someone watching my channel, because I, you know, if my brain worked similarly and I was watching myself and I was not myself, you know what I'm saying? If I saw someone have a very emotional outburst sort of and they were able to come back and try to refine their thoughts in future videos and try to explain their process I would feel seen and I would be very helped by that seeing that process unfold I would be very encouraged by that I recognize that a lot of maybe neurotypical and neurotypical outnumbers the neurodivergent you know that's that's why they're called neurotypical. <laughs> um, I recognize that most people aren't going to have that reaction to seeing me have what is essentially an emotional outburst on the internet. And I'm not going to be trying to have an emotional outburst on the internet. The way that my videoing usually works is I have a general idea of what I want to say. I press record and I figure out how to say it as I'm going. And I usually don't edit. And you know, I'm not saying that I don't want to improve the way that I communicate myself because I do, I really do, but I'm not always going to be able to completely control it. And I don't want to, when I feel like I have something I want to say, even if I'm not going to say it perfectly, I'm still going to try. I'd rather try than just not say anything at all. And those are my choices. Either I can shut up and leave the internet, like some of y'all want me to, or I can keep trying. And I know I said this already. I said that in a video already. So sorry, I am, I am repeating myself. And that is something that I do also perpetually, just repeating the same things over and over and over again. Um, okay, so the whole, like, when I was saying we should be talking about the prices of decks more, I, I did not know how to verbalize it at the time, um, but having sat with that for almost two weeks now, yeah, two weeks now, having sat with that idea for two weeks now, hearing other people's thoughts and opinions, what I really would like to say about that is if you are a tarot deck reviewer that receives decks for free, I would like for in that case, in that case, you know, I would like there to be a more thorough representation of the item as a product. If you are a person that, you know, you're just talking about some of your favorite things, it's not an advertisement in your case. Um, I'm not saying that we should always, every single time a tarot deck is in view, say how much it costs. That would be fucking exhausting. And I also don't usually... Like, I don't always name the decks that are in, like, my pick-a-pile readings and stuff like that. And I don't want to. And I'm not going to be providing links underneath my videos. Because I am a person that, you know, I have gotten a couple of discounts when I ask for it on decks. But I don't receive decks for free in exchange for reviews. And if I ever do, I will be treating those decks as if they it is a product if I, essentially, if you get given a deck for free in exchange for review, you are making a commercial for that deck, in a sense. So I would like to hear prices in that case, because you want to know how much something costs. And yes, you can provide the link in the description and somebody can go to it and see how much it costs. And yes, there are different prices 
at in different areas of the country, you're not going to be completely 100% accurate with that shit, but just doing the best to your ability, you know, with that stuff, I think is important. Um, so that's kind of, you know, like, yeah. But I, again, your channel, your rules. I, I'm not trying to tell anyone what to do. I'm just saying what I would like to see. That's all. <laughs> um, and I think part of the reason why I was so frustrated in the video, and I know I keep talking about this, but, but it's, people aren't letting it go. So I'm going to keep trying to talk through my process for as long as I want to keep trying to talk about it. So um, I think one of the reasons why I was so frustrated is because I frustrated about like, you know, the concept of like not being able to afford something, asking for a discount and not getting it. There were several different factors going on that like um, led to that. One of them was I, I felt frustrated because I felt like, okay, what am I doing wrong? Why am I not receiving decks for free? Um, to do in order to do reviews. What am I, am, am I not doing it right by reaching out to a person privately to ask for a discount? Like, do I sound entitled in the way that I approach people? I don't know. It's possible. It's possible that I'm just not doing it right. I don't know how the people that get decks for free, I don't know how they do it. And, and I don't necessarily need to know because I'm pretty sure that's, that's not a life path that I actually want. <laughs> um, but every once in a while, when I really want something that I feel like I can't afford, I do try to ask for some assistance. Um, but I don't know if I'm going to continue to do that. Because, yeah, I, I don't need to go into that. But I don't, I don't know if I want to continue to do that. Um, and, and another thing was happening when I recorded the video. Um, I've recognized it. I don't know what this means. So I'm just going to tell you where I am in the part of the process, which is what I do. Um, whenever I'm like at the end of my paycheck, you, you know, like I, because I do live pay paycheck to paycheck. So like when I'm at the point where like I can't charge anything else, to my checking because it's either at or near zero. When I'm at that point, there's a level of desperation that I end up wanting more things in that state than when I have money. So this was something I, I wanted to try to, ex I, I don't, like for example, like most of the time living paycheck to paycheck, it's, you know, like you get to a point, you want a thing, but you have $20 in your bank account. So you can't, you can't get the thing. You can't get the thing. <laughs> and I have made the decision to get the thing instead of getting gas. You know, I have made those decisions and I, I am still an adult and I've made those decisions, but also like, okay. So for example, so that is the way that I live most of the time, sort of like, you know, don't really have the money for much of anything. Uh, and it makes me feel just like desperate and um, uncomfortable and like, I can't have anything that I want. I can't have anything that I want. You know, it, that is the emotional experience. Um, and then I got my tax return um, like a week ago and it, it wasn't like a lot of money, but more than I normally have available to me. And so I go, I go on to like Amazon and Etsy and eBay and I look at all my wish lists and watch lists and like, I have the money now I can get all these things that I want and I don't want anything. When I have the money, I don't want the things. When I don't have the money, I want the things. So I do feel like this is a bit of a five of pentacles space, right? Um, I want the things more when they are not available to me. So I haven't wrapped my head around like, what's that fucking psychology? I, I would sort of attribute that to kind of an addiction mindset right now, but I don't really know. I don't know what that means, but it was like, and this happens to me over and over and over again in my life. Like I never have any money, never have any money. And then I get, you know, a hundred dollars for 
my birthday or something. And I'm like, ooh, what am I gonna do with this? What am I gonna do with this? And nothing seems worth it. When you do have a limited budget, whether or not you conceptualize yourself as poor or other people tell you you're allowed to conceptualize yourself as poor, um, every single, where you put your money, every single dollar is a big deal. It's a big decision. You have to think a lot about it because, and you don't want to have to think that hard about it, but you do. You do. And other people seem to be very upset when people are spending a lot of time thinking about what they do with their money. <laughs> but you have to, if you don't have a lot, you have to. And it's uncomfortable. Like, I think if I ever get to a financial point when this is, this is my dream. If I ever get to a point where when I go to the grocery store, I don't have to count. You usually have to have like the calculator up and the list and I'm going back and forth and back and forth. And usually there are things that just stay on the list because they're higher ticket items and I run out of money before I get to them. You know, my dream is to be able to go to the grocery store and get whatever the fuck I need and a couple of things that I just impulsively want without having to count. That is my idea of luxury. <laughs> and every once in a while, like I'll get lucky for some reason and I'll be able to do that. And it, anyway, that's just an example of like, you know. So let's see. That, okay, I've dealt with everything on that page. Is it a spending problem or a revenue problem? That was essentially like, I feel like that's the same statement as the title of my video. I saw this in a VR. Um, I have stopped sharing VRs, by the way, to my video because it seems that every time I do, the bullies in my comment section go to theirs. And so it makes me feel like I'm sending hateful people to others and I do not want to do that. However, if you have made a VR to me and you would like for me to share it, um, let me know. But okay, so I was watching a VR to my video and the person asked, is it a spending problem or a revenue problem? And that's what I like. That's that question. Um, do I have a shopping addiction or am I just poor? I think that those two sentences are the same with different words. That's what I think. So I just want to point that out. Um, I already said that part. Already said that. Already said that. Um, okay, like let's go back to the um, when people were saying just get a full time job, just save, be patient, be an adult, etc. Um, logically, these arguments make sense, right? So going back to the idea of logic versus emotion. Logic doesn't automatically fix anything. It's, it's a good thing to have in your head, but it, for me, manifests as more shame because in my head I'm thinking I should be saving. I should have a full-time job. I should be doing this. I should be doing that. And I just can't do it. And this keeps, especially neurodivergent people, keeps us in a repetitive shame loop because we cannot function the way that society wants us to function. And when someone wants to help us, they're just saying, well, you just have to do what everyone else does. That's all. <laughs> like I had to do it too. And that is always an argument that is upsetting to me when somebody says, well, you have to suck it up and you have to get a full-time job. People have been telling me that my whole life. Um, and, you know, statistically, neurodivergent people are underemployed. Um, so it's, it's not that weird as a neurodivergent to only have a part-time job. <laughs> uh, but people have been telling me that my whole life. Well, you just have to do it. You know, nobody wants to. You just have to. And I'm, my, I mean, I have many arguments against that. But one of mine has always been, but you don't. You don't have to. If having a full-time job, I mean, and like, obviously there are financial situations where someone really feels like they do not have another choice. And I'm going to get to 
some more context on my finances here in a second. Um, so, you know, I, anytime I sound like I'm making general, like over generalizations and declarative statements, please know that I understand there's nuance that I'm not seeing. There's always nuance that a person's not seeing always. So, okay. Um, what was I talking about? <laughs> Logic doesn't. Okay. My reaction to that has always been, well, I mean, if, having a full-time job is going to come at the cost of your happiness and you can pay your bills getting by with a part-time job even even like the the financial hardships that i feel um i think are worth it for me to not be overstimulated and stressed at all times um I don't think that that means that I'm not allowed to complain every once in a while when I don't have the money to get the things that I want in my life. You know, it's hard. It's hard being on a budget. <laughs> it's hard. And especially when you have executive dysfunction, it's hard to stick to a budget when you have executive dysfunction. This is a reality for people like me. And I'm sure it's a reality for everyone. It's just, you know, either particularly hard for neurodivergent people or it's just yeah I think it's just particularly hard for us is the main takeaway there but I it's always not see to me that's always seemed like a weird argument that like well you just have to do it no one wants to but you just do and to me my happiness is important so I'm gonna do everything I can to be happy. And there are, there are drawbacks, of course, to could I have a full-time job? Yeah, I could. I could. And I've almost gotten one many times in my life. But I always come back to, I know that it would be very, very difficult for me to function in any other level. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have friendships. I wouldn't have, um, my mental health would suffer tremendously if I had a full-time job. And it depends on what kind of job, you know, because I do have, you know, I do have my YouTube channel and, and my tarot reading business, I guess, if you call it that. Um, and I have my Patreon and I have my podcasts and, you know, I have all these things that I do on the internet and some of them make me a little bit of money. All told, all of those things sum up to full-time work. They do. But I just, I'm, I'm underfunded for most of those other things. And some of those other things could easily be called hobbies. Um, so anyway, that's all just like getting into the weeds of like, you know, whatever. I want to provide some context on my finances because um, me telling you guys my income is not the full picture. I understand that. So, I, you know, I wasn't trying to say like, I'm the poorest person in the world. <laughs> and I don't owe you guys any of the rest of this information, but I do want to give it. So I am married. And um, my partner is employed. So I'm not paying the bills all by myself. And I did mention that I have a mortgage and um, people have said, well, that's incredibly privileged. You're not poor if you have a mortgage. I want to tell you how I got that mortgage. So, um, our, as they call it in banking language, Michael and I's debt to income ratio is terrible. <laughs> we have good credit, we pay our bills, but our debt to income ratio is terrible. So when we got this house, um, a couple of things were happening. Like this house had belonged to friends of ours before us and they were moving out. So we were getting sort of a friends and family discount on the house to begin with. However, we still were not approved from the bank because of our debt to get income ratio. So we had to have not one, but two members of my family co-sign for our house. In order for the debt to income ratio to work out, they had the bank had to factor in four incomes. So we are both 
incredibly lucky and privileged to have had those resources to call upon. We also got um, a government loan. So it was like a government loan for people that couldn't afford to have a good down payment on the house because we didn't. Um, Cause we did not have a savings because it's very hard to save when you live paycheck to paycheck, you know, like you can put a little bit aside, <laughs> um, but it doesn't amount to a lot even over time. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's a lot. I'm feeling a little sweaty saying that much, but it, it's the truth. Like, yes, I am lucky that I have a mortgage, um, but it took a lot to get here. And we used all the resources that we had available to us. And it was a very difficult process, but it is, it is amazing to have that because rent costs more than mortgage payments where I live. So it's actually more financially, month to month, more financially feasible for us to have mortgage payments instead of rent. Um, so yeah, like I am lucky that even on my smaller income, I have more, more that I can allocate to hobbies than maybe some people in, in my same income bracket have because I have the resources of being married to someone who's also employed that helps pay the bills and also um, the, extra, <laughs> the extra advantages of being able to have um, family members that can be on the mortgage with us because <laughs> there's four names on our mortgage even though only two of us live here. Um, and we were lucky. We were lucky, like there's not a lot of circumstances in our financial situation at the time. And now it's so much worse. Like if we were going to buy a house right now, there's no way. I mean, I'd have to get like four family members to co-sign, <laughs> which I don't have that. Um, yeah, anyway, not that I don't have four family members, but you know. So that's a little bit of context on my finances. I recognize that like, it could be way worse. Just, I mean, I think we should be allowed to talk about our struggles, even if other people are struggling more than us. Like, that seems like a given to me because someone's always struggling more than you, always. But that doesn't make your struggles not valid, whatever those struggles are. Um... Okay. Another thing, like the whole comment section thing, I am going back and forth day to day. Like, am I going to keep my comments off for the foreseeable future? Or am I going to start holding all comments for review is what YouTube calls it, which basically means I have to approve a comment before it shows up publicly. I, I think for sure I'm going to do one of those two things for my channel moving forward because the shit show that is the comment section on the video that I made two weeks ago, I do not want that to happen again because it has very negatively affected my mental health. It has negatively affected the mental health of people that even witness the comment section. It has, maybe that's a little dramatic to say that it negatively affected their mental health, but it upset people. And I want to leave it there for that particular video because I want y'all to see what you did. But in the future, I, I'm not going to be able to navigate it the way that I did this time. Like I really tried to stay engaged. Um, I really tried to continue clarifying myself. Here I am two weeks later doing it again. Um, and it was important to me to do that, to really like, dig into it and try to navigate this entire experience from every emotional view viewpoint. I really tried. Um, and some of y'all said that I was graceful in my responses to people in the comments, which means a lot to me because um, in many cases it was difficult to be graceful. Um, Cause you know, you do eventually like you get torn down and you start to get defensive, right? Um, and I never wanted to do that. I think a few of my reactions to people were, were bordering on defensive. Um, I also have this thing when somebody, when somebody asks me a direct question, I forget that I don't have to answer it. <laughs> it's 
so sometimes I found myself like immediately like answering like really personal questions that people were asking me in the comments and sometimes I was able to like delete it before I posted it and other times it's just there <laughs> like oh, I do that sometimes when like st strangers will ask me a very personal question and I don't want to answer it but I do and that's yeah that's something I'm still learning a lot of times you're going to get way too much information out of me. Maybe most times you're going to get way too much information out of me. Um, the thing that I wrote in my notes here is my comment sections aren't going to be ugly anymore. Whether that means they're not going to exist at all or whether that means I have to personally approve every single comment, which I do not have the uh, ability, mental ability, psychological ability, whatever. I don't. I don't have the capacity to check the comments every single day. Sorry, I keep looking over here, but it's my window. So like when things are happening outside, I'm getting distracted. <laughs> Squirrel. Um, or finch. <laughs> um, sparrow. I get finches and sparrows confused a lot. I need to like, you know, uh, rectify that. Anyway, <laughs> my comment sections aren't going to be ugly anymore because yeah, I, and I'm not going to be able to, and I, I really apologize to anyone that's like been leaving very insightful comments lately. Um, I hate that you also have to wait until I've seen your comment before I approve it. Like, I hate that that is the way that it goes, but the ones that are nasty, just them staying there. I see them over and over and over and I internalize them. I, I realized the other day, it was like two or three days ago, I was reading my fucking comments again because, you know, the I the general vibe in the last two weeks is like at the very least once a day, I sit down at my computer and I deal with the comments. <laughs> and so I was doing that the other night. And um, what was the point of this story? totally lost it. Oh, okay. I, I, I was, I was literally going through. So like I would read one comment that was supportive, respectful, agreeing or disagreeing, supportive and respectful comments, which most of them were truly most of them were. So I'd read one of those and I'd be feeling good about myself. Like, Oh, this person got it or they got some of it. They get me. I'm okay. It's all right. I'm okay. I'll, I'll leave the video up because yeah okay yes and then i'd read the next comment and it would just be nastiness um of one flavor or another like i don't feel like going into all of the nastiness because it's it's living in here rent free guys anybody that left a nasty comment congratulations you're a voice in my head now um but i and, and i and i would just like be like oh my god Oh my God, I'm an awful person. I'm, an, I'm making people feel bad. I'm an awful person. Like, do I need to take the video down? Do I need to, oh my God, it, do I need to stop being on YouTube? Like, and I just, you know, immediately start spiraling because that's that. And I realized I'm internalizing every single comment and that's not healthy. <laughs> so yeah. And that's why I say, I really don't know how I'm going to navigate I'd love to be able to tell you exactly either I'm going to turn the comments off or I'm going to be holding them all for review, but just being able to see because people dislike me right now. And I never thought of myself as a person that like gave a shit about like being popular, but, but I guess that's what that means if I'm really uncomfortable with the fact that people don't like me, right? <laughs> But I need to get comfortable with that because if I can't get comfortable with that, I'm not, I'm not going to be speaking truth as I see it. Like, it's not like the truth because I think truth is extremely subjective. Um, but I'm not going to be speaking my truth in the current moment when I'm speaking to you guys, if I'm, if I'm worried about being liked because I'm going to be misinterpreted and 
all I can do is try to be as clear as possible. I do think that, yeah, I think I'm just going to stop there because I, the, the other thing that I've noticed is that the longer I try to explain myself, the more likely I am to start spiraling into language that's going to be upsetting for people. The more likely I am to lose my um, emotional composure. Um, and, and that's something that I've noticed, like when I feel like I have to explain myself to someone, it's, I mean, one-on-one -on -one with a person, if I feel like I constantly need to explain myself and there's a difference between like, you know, explaining yourself, like you're just talking about your emotional experience in the world to a friend. And there's, and someone that you need to constantly justify yourself, they don't just get you. And um, not everyone's going to understand me all the time, but if they get me in the sense of they want to understand me and they know that I'm coming from a good place and they care about me, um, that's okay. I'll explain myself to those people all day long. But I'm never going to be able to get through to people that don't get me and don't want to get me. So if, so those are the people I have to let them go on by. I have to delete their comments, possibly even block them, which feels, it still feels so extreme to me to block a person. Um, but again, I have to, I don't want the ugly comments to be living inside my head. I don't want them there. Uh, I don't need any more voices inside my head. <laughs> um, I don't, you know, cause we all have that, right? We all have the, like the voices of our caregivers, parents, influential teachers, humans in our lives growing up. We have those voices in our heads and those are the ones that are mean to us, you know, like, and, and like I said, I think tarot society, I think we are a bunch of people that have a lot of, we're damaged people drawn together by forces we are not aware of. <laughs> that is a Depeche Mode lyric. Um, we are. And if we don't come from a general place of wanting to understand each other, assuming that our intentions are good, then we're I, I don't, I don't know what we are for. Um, yeah, there's probably other things that I will have wished that I said or wish that I said differently. Um, when I watch this video back, um, or someone will point out in the comments if I have them, if they exist, someone will point something out in the comments that's like, oh yeah. That's what I should have said. But you know, I'm never gonna be a finished process. This is this is lo-fi over here on Mixtress Video. <laughs> we're we're just doing we're doing our best. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna stop now because it's already starting to spiral. It probably started 10 or 15 minutes ago. So thank you guys for listening. If you made it this far, um it likely means you're trying to understand me unless you just hate watching me. And if you're hate watching me, don't leave a comment. Okay. <laughs> See, I don't want to end on that. I don't want to end on that. Um, thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for, I don't know, just letting me try to process myself on the internet. And I, I do like, I do feel like it's, it's still helpful for me to do this. So I'm going to keep doing it until, until it turns, you know, see, I don't want to end it on that either. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you guys for listening.